Now, one of the things I was looking forward to the most in the sequel trilogy was once again seeing Anakin Skywalker in Force Ghost form, of course, and hopefully played by none other than Hayden Christensen, who played him in the prequels. And honestly, going into it, I thought it was a no-brainer. I thought, of course, we'd see him at some point, that it was only a matter of time before he showed up at some key moment and had maybe a small but very impactful part to play. I mean, I certainly didn't expect him to be the starring or main character of the trilogy, or even to have a big part to play in terms of screen time. I really only expected to see him a handful of times at most, but I did expect to see him. After all, the story of Star Wars really is Anakin and his family's story. I mean, the prequels were all about his fall, the original trilogy about how his son redeemed him, and so I thought a big part of the sequels was going to be about his lasting legacy, what he could somehow do to ensure that all he had gone through wasn't for nothing. That again, he'd show up at a key moment or two and offer a bit of wisdom to his son or grandson and sort of change the path or direction of things when they looked darkest. Which kind of brings up another facet of this I was really, really hoping and honestly expecting to see, which is a meeting between father and son, at least one scene where Anakin and Luke spoke to each other. But of course, not only did we not get that, we didn't get Anakin at all, outside of hearing his voice among many dead Jedi voices at the very end of The Rise of Skywalker, which in itself made no sense that we'd hear all these other Jedi who never became a Force ghost, but I've talked about all that before in other videos, so I'll let it go for now. And so what I do want to talk about here is that Ryan Johnson on Twitter was asked if he considered using Anakin Skywalker at any point in The Last Jedi, and this is what he had to say. Briefly for the tree burning scene, but Luke's relationship was with Vader, not really Anakin, which seemed like it would complicate things more than that moment allowed. Yoda felt like the more impactful teacher for that moment. Okay, so to be fair here, yes, I do basically get where he's coming from. That Yoda would feel like the more impactful teacher in the moment, I guess you could say, because Yoda was Luke's teacher and Anakin never was, so there is a master-student relationship there that Anakin and Luke do not have. But I'll take a quote right out of The Force Awakens to counter that when Leia is talking to Han, who is skeptical about trying to talk to and save their son, and Leia says, Luke is a Jedi, you're his father implying that there's a better chance that a father would be able to reach their son over a teacher. Furthermore, I'll also point out what Carrie Fisher said about Star Wars itself, that it's all about family. So sure, maybe to some degree Yoda makes more sense in that moment, as a teacher trying to impart a lesson about failure on their student, but Anakin makes more sense overall for the larger story. Because once it was a son trying to save his father, it was Luke trying to save Anakin. Now, in his darkest hour, a father is trying to save his son. As George Lucas would say, it's poetry, it rhymes. But as I've discussed before in many other videos, The Last Jedi, ironically enough, really suffers from Ryan Johnson only thinking in the moment about his movie and not about what impact his decisions have on the larger story. So I guess we really shouldn't be surprised by this comment about what he thought worked in that moment. But what I actually find the most frustrating part of this comment is when he says that Luke's relationship was with Vader, not really Anakin, which is only true from a certain and flawed point of view. Because the simple truth is that Darth Vader didn't have any sort of relationship with Luke. Vader saw him as nothing more than a tool to be used to help him defeat the Emperor and become the Master Sith. Nothing more than a potential powerful apprentice. That's it. There's no relationship there. However, Anakin eventually comes back to the light because Luke was able to somehow reach past Vader and connect with his actual father, not the monster and machine that he had become, but with that Jedi and man we see in the prequels who would do anything for the ones he loved. And the moment I believe this connection begins when a figurative crack forms in Vader's armor that allows Anakin to begin to reemerge is when Vader reaches out his hand to Luke in The Empire Strikes Back, offering Luke the chance to join him and rule the galaxy together. But Luke instead lets go and willingly falls to what he no doubt thinks will be his death. In other words, Luke would rather die than become like his father. He'd rather die than be able to accomplish this one thing that Darth Vader has been after all this time. This chance to be the one that gets to rule the galaxy and decide and dictate things. Which goes all the way back to that picnic scene in Attack of the Clones. It's this moment that Vader and or Anakin begins to not only question everything, but to realize what he has become and what or who he used to be, that he used to be like a son who would rather die than fall to the dark side. It's this moment that a connection forms, not between Vader and Luke, but between Anakin and Luke. And it's this moment that sets up Luke's ultimate victory over the Sith, 
All of it is the reason why Anakin will pick up Palpatine and toss him down a shaft at the end of Return of the Jedi. And it's also the reason why Anakin not being a part of Palpatine's final demise in the sequel trilogy is such a shame and why he should have been a part of it. Why it should have been Anakin talking to Luke in The Last Jedi, even if it didn't seem to work in the moment. Because as I pointed out in a video just the other day, the interesting thing to explore in the sequels with Anakin and Luke is that Anakin fell to the dark side because of his attachments, because of his love for Padme mostly, though his mother's death obviously played a huge role as well. But the irony is what brought Anakin back to the light was also love or attachments, both Anakin's love for his family or his son, as well as Luke's attachment and compassion for his father. And so love and attachments both condemned and saved Anakin. And it's this great contradiction that would have been an interesting idea to explore in the sequels, but they were too busy putting Luke on an island and turning him into a grumpy old hermit over addressing this contradiction and actually exploring the relationship between Luke and Anakin. And sure, in a sense, Johnson is right. There really isn't much of a relationship between Anakin and Luke. Certainly, there is an important bond that is formed. Again, there is a connection and reason why Luke was able to bring him back to the light. But what Johnson fails to realize was that it was his and J.J.'s job to further explore or forge that relationship between Anakin and Luke. It didn't exist yet because it was the sequel's place to create it. So don't try to innocently throw your hands up in the air and basically say bringing in Anakin there would make no sense because Anakin doesn't have a relationship with Luke. Instead, look at the bigger picture and realize that you could still make your point about failure by using Anakin. He certainly knows a thing or two about it. And you could also do something important and major for the larger story by starting to explore and create a relationship between those two characters, the two main characters of the whole saga. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying The Last Jedi suddenly becomes a great movie if it has Anakin in that scene instead of Yoda. There are plenty of other problems that would still remain. But the failure of both J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson to ever bring the Force ghost of Anakin into the story outside of his voice at the end of Episode 9, to me shows a lack of understanding of the bigger story. As I said the other day, it feels like they only have a surface-level understanding of Star Wars. And I'm not saying they aren't talented individuals that they don't know how to write or create a movie, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying there's a certain level of disconnect between the sequels and the rest of the story. And seeing Ryan Johnson talking about what worked in the moment and not what was best for the overall story is just more evidence of that to me. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about Ryan Johnson had to say here. Do you agree? Was Yoda the better choice in that scene? Or should it have been Anakin? Or do you just not care because you don't like The Last Jedi either way? Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.